Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 As the worship team come to praise him, we don't want no spectators this morning. We want to fill this atmosphere with the presence of the Lord. So we're going to praise him. We're going to sing. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to clap our hands. Hallelujah. We're going to stomp our feet. We're going to dance before the living God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to declare there's no rock that's going to cry in my place as long as I'm alive to glorify his name. Hallelujah. 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 He did an awesome thing for us. He did an awesome thing for us. It is the day today that signifies that Jesus Christ arose, hallelujah, with all power in his hand. He said if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, those are the two things you have to do. Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth, you will be saved. Hallelujah. So we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on in, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we love you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And when you say hallelujah, put a smile in your voice. That means you're thankful, you're grateful. Hallelujah. Put a smile in your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we love you, Lord. And we praise you. And we magnify you. worthy of our praise. Lord, as we come to celebrate the resurrection, how you came and you died for us to cleanse us of our unrighteousness, Lord, we thank you, Father. We have an air of expectation for what you will do for us and in us and through us on today. Lord, we thank you for the praise team and the band. Lord, for every servant, for PD. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for returning a hundredfold all that they've given out. And Lord, those of us who have come have us have hearts of worship this morning, Father. Lord, that this is not a show. This is not entertainment. This is our opportunity to raise holy hands and say, hallelujah, Father. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. I hope everybody who walks through this door, Father, will have that expectation as we take communion, Lord, that people will take it with clean hands and a pure heart, Lord. And Lord, have your will and your way in this place today. Have your will and your way in this place today. I thank you and I praise you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the angels that are here amongst us. Lord, have us to be sensitive to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Have us to leave room for you today, Father. Lord, we have our agenda, Father, but we give this service over to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Come on, give a hand clap for your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team. You can start us a little early this morning.
he lives. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday, FCC. Hallelujah. Welcome to this March 31st, 2024 celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is a faithful witness, our firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to whom he loves us, loved us and freed us from our sins by his blood. And what do kings do? They reign! What do kings do? They reign! What do kings do? They reign! Hey! Jesus reign!
knee to the bow. And what every tongue confesses yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. His is the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let us stand Hallelujah. and our worship that name that is above every name.
and Mary Magdalene and told them, don't be alarmed. Said you were looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has arisen. He is not here. Hallelujah. In Revelation, it says, with your blood, that's the blood of Jesus, you purchased for God persons from every tribe, every language, and people, and nation. Here's a forever truth. He has risen. That's for all eternity. Forever, the truth, Jesus has risen.
service, the Lord spoke to me and said that uh, resurrection is only as effective as it, he's resurrected in your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. And there are things that he wants to resurrect you above, to resurrect sickness, disease, depression, 
anxiety, uh, poverty, all those things took place because of this resurrected king that we are worshiping this morning. So that's why we worship him, for, first of all, for who he is, but secondly, for what he has done. <laughs> no, no, we, we worship him for, first of all, who he is. Secondly, what he has done. Amen? Be seated in this environment. What we do is uh, a resurrected son, we like to serve communion. And communion is a covenant meal. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be a member of Fellowship Christian Church, but you do have to be a member of the body of Christ. So what I want to do is lead you in a prayer of inclusion, prayer of salvation. And so what we can do is everyone will be eligible to partake of communion. Amen? That's amen. They say amen. This is, this, we are black church. That means y'all talk back to me. All right? Did y'all not eat breakfast this morning? That what happened? Say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for, to die for me. I recognize I need your help and confess you as Lord and Savior this day. Amen. So if you pray that prayer for the first time or the 101st time, you are saved, born again, part of the family of God. And what that means is that you have benefits uh, both here as well as on the other side. So if you die tonight, you spend eternity with him. But there's a lot of good stuff God wants for you to experience here. And so now that you have prayed that prayer, you are part of the family and you are eligible for that. Amen? So we're going to do my wife. Oh, I'm not going to serve for communion. We're going to turn it over to um, just, just follow their direction. <laughs> usually, we, usually we do it a little bit differently. So uh, there will be people come to you in your row uh, to serve you communion. And then we will take, we will take communion together. Amen? The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood that saved my soul, that saved my soul.
It's the blood of Jesus. So if you know anything about communion, communion is, as I said, a covenant meal. And you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the apostle Paul talked about taking communion in a haphazard fashion. So communion is about two things. Number one, it's about remembrance. Say remembrance. remembrance. Well, it's about remembering what we remember today. His death, his burial, and what? Resurrection. Resurrection is called the finished work of Christ. But then it's also about judgment. Judgment means you're judging yourself. And scripture says that if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. And so you're judging yourself not to condemn yourself, but to coach yourself to be the best version of yourself that you can be. You know, be the best husband, father, pastor, business person. There are a lot of areas that God wants you to be the best you can be at. And he is not comfortable with you being complacent and being stagnant. And so he wants you to go to the next level and go to the next dimension. Amen. So let's take partake of this wafer, which represents his body, which was broken for you. So let's eat together. And then next, this grape juice represents uh, his blood that was shed. So let's drink together. And then after that, you say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody did something nice for you, say thank you. Right, 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 right. There should be a bucket coming in your area somewhere soon. And then after that, you can greet two or three of your neighbors, say happy resurrection Sunday, good morning to you, how good you look and all that.
Carolina. Well, welcome to this Resurrection Sunday service. Hopefully you have settled in. Worship was off the chain, wasn't it? Give it up for the praise team and the band. Give it up for them. Okay, that was your practice clap. All right, let's, let's try that again. Give it up, give it up for the praise. There you go, there you go, there you go. All right, y'all coming on up. I give you a B minus, keep coming, keep coming. <laughs> Welcome to this 10 o'clock service at Foster Christian Church. I am your pastor, Dexter B. Jenkins. We started FCC in uh, September 2012. Handful of us believe that God to call us to the high park. Can y'all give me a little bit more mic? Because I'm, I sound like I'm low. And less band. Thank you. All right. Say it again. Uh, yep, they'll fix it. They'll fix it. So we were called to this Hyde Park, Rosendale area, Dedham area, believing that God had called us to really have a significant impact in this area. And so uh, thus far, you guys are the fruit of that, and we expect to continue to grow and do great things. Amen. And that's because of you growing and being successful and doing all that God has called for you to do. Amen? Amen. Uh, there is no organized church school today, but if the gym is open, so if your child gets a little antsy and want to run around in the gym, they can. Uh, you can go in the gym with them. There's no unsupervised children around here. We want to make sure everybody is accounted for. And so uh, at any time, you can slide on out and do that. All right, you guys ready to go to work? Let's do our confession of faith. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. We will get one to you. Anybody need a Bible? Bible, Bible. I know nowadays we have this electronic apparatus that most people use their phones and all that. Uh, we need two Bibles here. I'm sort of old school. I still like the leather on Sunday. I like to hold. I like to hold it. Pastor, you hot. my phone is my Bible. Whatever, yo. <laughs> the technology. Technology is good. I, I, I use my phone during the week. But it's just something about a Sunday, I need to hold my Bible physically. You guys ready? Let's do our confession of faith. One, two, three. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I recognize my Bible as the abundant life manual, changing what I believe and how I think, empowering me to establish the kingdom of God in me and then through me. Amen. Father, we thank for those who are here today. We recognize that. This is a divine appointment. Resurrection Sunday, 2024. You knew we'd be here even before we knew we'd be here. And so we know you, you've met us powerfully in worship, Lord, as we have lifted you up. You said in your word that if you be lifted up, you do the drawing. And so, Lord, you've drawn folks into 1415 High Park Avenue. You've drawn folks uh, through the app and YouTube and Facebook and all the things that we do digitally. And so, Lord, we know that you're going to meet all of us at our point of need. And all of us need something from you, God. Some of us need salvation. Some of us need healing. Some of us need paradigm shifts. Some of us need anxiety to be lifted. Some need relational things. Lord, let not one person leave here untouched because of an encounter with the kingdom of God. In Jesus Christ's name, we all sit together. Amen. All right. Luke chapter 15 will be our opening. Luke chapter 15 will be our opening. And... Um, it's a somewhat of a familiar story if you travel, actually you, people who, who don't even go to church even sort of know the story a little bit. Uh, it's called the prodigal son. And uh, let me make sure I put my timer on before I go long. I'm saying y'all got a roast in the oven that you got. I don't want you to miss your roast and burn it. <clears throat> Can't have that. The crock pot is cooking. I want you to make sure you get there in time for it. But it's called a prodigal son, and so what I, what, what I want to do is pull a few points out of that and tie that into Resurrection Sunday. All right? Luke chapter 15, look at verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Verse 12, excuse me, verse 13, excuse me. Not, not long after, he, after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. 
King James Version said riotous living, which I like better. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and it began to be in need. So he went out and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed pigs. This is a Jewish boy feeding pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pies that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Verse 17, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's highest servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, I love that, bring the best robe and put it on him, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, bring the fatted calf and kill it, let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found. And so they began to play cool in the game. (laughs) Celebrate good time, come on. There's a party going on right here. <laughs> Bring your good time. The laughter too. We gone to a little break. All right, I'm, I'm done. I'm quite sure they didn't play that, Sister Alex, but it was something along those lines. <laughs> you know, it, it was something along those lines of it was a celebration song. And, uh, this, this, this problem right here has so much good, juicy stuff in it. I, I mean, oh my goodness, I was reading, I'm like, man, I can't talk about that this week. I'll be talking about it another time. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's full of good kingdom stuff. And how we tie this into Resurrection Sunday and um, the, the benefits of the kingdom is what, what I really want to focus on today. So let's go to our next slide. So our key statement is this. Our key statement for those of you uh, who are with, actually, go back to the, because I didn't even announce the title. The title is The Robe, The Ring, The Sandals, and the Calf. Say that. The Robe, The, the ring, ring, The Sandals, and the Calf. And the calf. That's what we're going to talk about today. The Robe, The Ring, Sandals, and the Calf. All right, next slide. Now. Key statement is this. Now, key key statement is for those of you who are new to my style of teaching. The key statement is what I want you to to walk around with. Uh, I grew up in a church where uh, we had a good time at church, but then they said, what did the the pastor preach on? You were like, I don't know, but it was good. (laughs) Which to me is like, dude, that's a waste of time. It's sort of like, you know, you you being a student in school, like, what the teacher teach on? I don't know, but uh, I had a good time in class. (laughs) But you're going to flunk that class (laughs) because you don't remember what they said. And so the key statement is what if so if somebody comes to you at work tomorrow, but like, what did Pastor talk about? You have a sense of what I talked about. So on the count of three, let's read it together. One, two, three. The finished work of Christ gave us access to the Father and other tremendous benefits. I like to call them kingdom amenities that God gave us access to when Christ died. See, that's why this this, this, was all the flowers about and all the dancing about. Well, it's because we are what? Celebrating what Christ, first of all, number one, who he is, and then number two, what he has done. Of course, we we recognize that he he is the king of kings and the lord of lords and all that. See, a lot of times we we tend to put... um, so-called Christianity in a religious box, which I don't like to do, but I use Christianity because people understand it. But if we look at all religions, Christ is the only one who's ever died and lived. So you got Muhammad, Confucius, all the other ones, that, that all of them, they dead, and they still graveyard dead. They ain't get up. So Christ is the only one who tasted death and defeated it. Amen. <laughs> ah. 
the only one who tasted death and said, you can't handle this. <laughs> now, that only is important because uh, obviously, amen, we clap for, but it, death can't handle you. Do you recognize that? No type of death can handle you. Death of your finances, death of your health and all that, so on and so forth. But you got to understand this, that, that the finished work of Christ, finished work means his death, come on now, his burial and his resurrection. That is what we call the finished work of Christ. So when he's at the cross and he said, it is finished, he wasn't quite finished yet, but he was heading that direction. It's the finished work of Christ that connected you back up to God the Father and then gave you these benefits, these kingdom amenities that we, are, uh, that we should be partaking of. Now, I'm only going to talk about four of the amenities today. There are thousands of them. Well, I, I've never studied this, but this guy said there are over 8,000 promises in the Bible for you. Now, I've never, like I said, I've never studied. I know it's more than one. Or two, and, and, and to tell you the truth, I don't need all 8,000. I just need the one I need at the time. Amen. So like when you cook, you don't need all the utensils. You just need the one you need at the, the time. You don't need all of them, but you got a drawer full of them, right? You don't need all of them. You just need the, the spatula. You're cooking some eggs. That's all. <laughs> Next slide. Now, what, what does um, <laughs> what is the robe what is the ring, what is the sandals, and what does the calf mean? Ask me that. You ain't got to ask y'all for them. Like, that's too long, Pastor. What does this say? Just say, just say this. What, is, what does it all mean? Say that. I'm glad you asked me. Number one, the robe represents being in right standing with the Father. You notice that uh, when he came to the Father, they said, quick, I love that, quick, put the robe on him. Now, this is sort of my Holy Ghost imagination. I don't know if this happened. There was this brother by the name of James Brown. Y'all know who James Brown is? <laughs> Most of y'all know who James. Everybody know who James Brown is. It's like, you ain't lived if you ain't. Everybody at least know who James Brown is, even if, even if you don't listen to his music. But James Brown had this dude named Maceo who worked with him. And what Maceo would do is Maceo's job was to do what? That was, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, that was Maceo's whole job. His whole job was to put the robe on JB. Well, see, that, that's just my imagination. I'm quite sure it didn't happen like that, but, you know, go with me. So here is, he said, quick, put the robe on him. Now, the robe is this thing, this robe of righteousness. Now, why is the robe of righteousness important? Now, Isaiah 61 to 10, I'm not going to take you to it, but it talked about us having a robe of righteousness. Now, a robe of righteousness, righteousness is two things. Number one, righteousness is a mindset. Say mindset. mindset. See, that boy had lost his mind out there when he left. Yeah. That brother had lost his mind. That's what the Bible, Romans chapter 12, talked about. There needs to be a renewing of him. That boy had lost his mind. He had lost all his good home training. Anybody ever been there? You went, you, you went, got away from your parents, did some old crazy stuff. You, 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 you sort of had some temporary insanity, lost your mind for a hot minute. What, what, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. We recovered, <laughs> but that brother, that's what happened to him. He lost his mind. Got involved in wild, riotous living. So what the father had to do was he had to get his mind right again. Well, how do you know his mind was wrong, Pastor? Well, he talked about put me out there in the field like a servant. Yeah. You ain't thinking right because you are a son and sons do have different benefits than servants. Yes. So he had to get his mind, he had to get his thinking right. Boy, I don't want you out there in the field. I need you in the house. Learning how to run the, the family kingdom business. Yes. Got it? So it's a mindset and then I said what? It's a position. Well, what's the position? The position is a position of authority. He had lost that. Well, Pastor, how do you know that? Well, if you feed them pigs, you lost your authority. Well, amen. Amen. If you, I, my, my people are from South Carolina, so I don't know if some of y'all are maybe northern folk, but my people are from South Carolina, so I've seen pigs, and I've seen slop and all that. It's nasty. It's nasty. 
It's a nasty, and it smells nasty. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You ever been to the South, you've been around some pigs, they feed them the slop and all that. Dude, that's some nasty stuff. So here he is looking at the pigs, and that looks good to him. And the pig is a nasty animal. <laughs> they taste good, I ain't gonna lie. Some of y'all had bacon this morning, didn't you? He's like, yeah, Pastor, it was nasty, but it, it, it was good. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I get it. It ain't good for you, but, uh, you know, get, get me on that. A pig is good. <laughs> He's just a nasty animal. And you are what you eat. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Now, I'm just going to pause for a minute. You see, me, you, see me, you see me pause? I ain't even move. I just pause. But I ain't talking about that today. No, but it's this thing of he had to get that boy's mind right and he had to get him back in the right position. So, see, the coat marked his thinking. I got to put this coat on him, this shoot, right. This robe marked his thinking. Well, you ain't thinking right. I got to get you thinking right. The robe represents what? Righteousness. Now, I'm going to tie this all into you because all of this is tying into you. All of us were thinking wrong yes. and still working on it, to be honest. Well, and pastors, I, I come out here with y'all. I'm still working on mine. On, it's an ever-increasing thought process yes. that God wants to bring you into. Yes. None of us think right. Yes. But it's what the role represents this thing called what? Right. Righteousness. You are in right standing with God. And I like the word quick, and it, God does it. Quickly. I'm talking about how to do it, but he does it. You understand God brought you here today? He's not mad at you. Good place to clap. He's not mad at you. See, in the kingdom, God don't expect you to do cartwheels and stuff to be in relationship with him. See, that's what we do. If you do X, Y, and Z, so it's, 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 it's more conditional than anything else. Amen? So that's what the robe represents. What does, what does the ring represent? See, the ring represents covenant. Some of y'all are married, right? Most of y'all are married wear a ring, right? Yeah. If, if you're married, I hold your hand up. You got a ring. Okay. Yeah, so see, see y'all, y'all wear a ring. This is a funny story. My, my, my wife and I first got married. I talked about not wearing a ring because I wasn't used to wearing it. I was like, it's all heavy and all that. She's like, okay. <laughs> Y'all see I'm wearing it now, right? Mm-hmm. So that argument didn't go over too well, Sister Michelle. <laughs> yeah, put your ring on. <laughs> so my, I've been wearing a ring for 20, about 27 years, couple of years. I've been wearing a ring. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the ring means you off the market. That's what a ring means. Amen. The ring represents we're back in covenant with one another. Well, yeah. the, the son, when he left, he broke covenant. Amen. Amen. And, and the father said, no, 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 quick. Put, put the robe on him. No, 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 no. Also, put the ring on his hand. I want him to know, dude, we connected again. Yeah. See, that's what God's saying to you today. Hey, you, you pray the prayer salvation. Hey, man, we connected again. We connected. That's what the ring represents. A connection with God the Father. No one, thank you, he wants no one to be disconnected. Our spiritual forefathers, Adam and Eve, disconnected us. Pulled the plug on our relationship. The Father said, nah, come on now. Put the ring back. I want you to know you and I are one. Jesus said this in John, John chapter 14. The Father and I are one. You understand that when you give your life to Christ, you and God are one. So much so, he moves on the inside of you. Yes, yes. Amen. <laughs> he moves, God moves on the inside of you. Now, check this out. If you knew God lived on the inside of you, would you go some of the places you go? Uh-huh. I got you on that one, didn't I? See, if you, see, if you knew God was with you everywhere, you had that mentality, would you talk to your wife the way you talk to your wife? I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, preacher. 
My wife, is, as I'm preaching, she's preaching too. <laughs> well, you speak that way to your husband? Mm, say that. Now, see, see, we, we, we don't have a, a God inside minded mentality. He's with you all the time. Later for what people see, God sees you. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things, see, in this, in this society, we, we've sort of, I'm getting off a tangent, we, we've sort of lost this fear of God thing. Yeah. You've lost that. People do anything, say anything. A lot. certain things I just can't do because God's going to get me for that. I can't do that. It's sort of like your, you, if you have parents like mine, there are certain things I, would, I, I just would not do because I wouldn't have to go see Sam and Ann Jenkins. That's my parents. Now. I don't want to have to deal with them. Because I'm telling you, my parents were loving, but if you cross the line, I, I ain't getting no amens on that one. <laughs> see, some of you have my old school parents. See, you cross the, they, they love you, but do cross the line and see what happens. You disobey, which is what that boy did. He committed, we're talking about, he, he committed treason. Commit treason, see what happened. If I say being at 11, that means 11. Not 11.30, not 11.05, not 11.10. It means really 10.59. Amen. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to be stepping, see when the key, my house, see when the key turned, and I have a house where, you know, somebody had houses where the door creaked. Yeah. Everybody can hear it. And so you try to tip in the house. You try to turn it, and nah, nah. We, we all hear you coming up in there. What, and they, first thing you do like this, what time is it? Yeah, they hear the door, they'll be like this, what time is it? You be sitting right here, sitting right there, yeah, right. He got a chair waiting on you. So don't come trying to tip in, you ain't going to make it. <laughs> but no, so, so the ring represents this thing of you being Back in covenant relationship with God the Father. He's on the inside of you. Amen. Number three. So the, we got the what? The robe? We got the what? The ring? Now, what does the what? The sandals represent. Now, I can imagine this boy came from a distance. There wasn't no jet blue he could get on back then. No Amtrak. Not even no Greyhound. He ain't had no money, so he was broke. He ain't had no horse, no camel, no nothing. So this boy walked from where he came from, and he said he was off in a distant land. So who knows how many days it took him to walk from where he was to, to, to the time he got back at the house. And then here come the father putting what? Fresh sandals on his feet. You know the feet was all crusty and dusty. And nasty, long toenails and everything. <laughs> But pastor, why is that significant? Because God overlooks a lot of you and I's dirt to still be in a relationship with us. <laughs> See the mistake? Some of us try to make it, hold on, let me clean myself up first and then come to God. You ain't going to never be clean enough. You ain't, let me help you. You ain't going to never be clean. Not good English, but good preacher. You ain't going to never be clean enough on your own. You're goody two shoes. I don't care if you can feed the hungry, clothe the naked, do whatever else. C scripture tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags in the God. So ain't nothing you can do. What you got to do is you got to come submit to his plan, which I'm talking about in a second. But the sandals represent, could represent a couple of things. Number one, it, it could, yeah, if I'm, I'm doing a preacher thing like Della, uh, it, it could represent a new walk. <laughs> The boy got a new walk. He walked. See, he was walking crooked before. Now he walking straight. All right. mm. Amen. But my thing, I really think it represents is this. That's, that's cool too. But it represents the fact that he's walking. I said early in authority yes. again. Yes. Joshua one and three says, "Every place that the sole of your foot tread is yours." Amen. You understand that God wants to give you territory. In the area and the sphere of influence that he's called you to dominate. There's an area he's called you to dominate in, to succeed in, to thrive in. For some of you, it's business. For some of you, it's education. For some of you, it's obviously a marriage. See, all, see, God has called you to walk in authority in that area. Yes. To walk fearlessly 
in that area. Because many of us are bound by fear and anxiety. I don't even know you, and, and many of us are dealing with that. One of the benefits of one of the kingdom amenities is that God has made you as bold as a lion. Got one, I got a couple of eight mans over here. Pastor, I'm scared of everything. Well, baby, confess that you're bold as a lion. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Part of the reason why fear is dominating you is because you ain't facing it. Come on. See, I grew up in a neighborhood where you had to fight the bully, or at least talk like, at least square up. Come on. Some of y'all grew up in the hood like I did, right? You, should, you had to at least. Well, go get your cousin, somebody. Somebody had to square up with him. Right. And then you, you got some real courage to see, my, my cousin here now. My cousin. <laughs> <laughs> my big brother's here now. Well, let me say this to you. Jesus is your big brother. <laughs> Jesus is your big brother. And he sure can fight. Jesus, Je matter of fact, Jesus getting his crane in a minute or he'd be like this, what? <laughs> Jesus getting his crane on you. It's over. But them sandals represent what? This authority that he was supposed to walk in. Do you understand? You're supposed to walk in an, an authority now that you're in the kingdom of God? That doesn't mean that st stuff is not going to happen to you. Of course it is. That's life. I'll never be the one to pass. It ain't never going to happen to you. That's a lie. Can give me some amen for that. Is life going to happen to you? Sometimes you're going to be blindsided by things of life. What, how that, what, what was that? Yeah, it's going to happen. That's called life. But despite that, I'm still more than a conqueror. Come on now. I'm not moved by situations and circumstances. I'm still a champion. Yeah, you move by circumstances too much. Oh my God. Oh my God. My plea, I ain't moved by that. So it represents what? Authority. authority. You're walking in this thing called authority and power and anointing. The last one is this the calf. Now, what, what did the calf represent? Now, the calf represented the, uh, the blood that had to be shed because the boy committed treason. He would, the, the calf represents a couple things. The calf, matter of fact, if, uh, let, me, let me quote it right. It's the fatted calf. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Now, why was the fatted calf significant? Because it represented the best the father had. Yeah. So you mean the father killed the best that he had, shed his blood, to get back in relationship with this son. Y'all not feeling me this morning. <laughs> he, killed, he killed the what? The fatted calf. That was the best he had. Now, so he represented two things. He represented, first of all, dinner. We're going to eat that tonight. So if you're playing cool in the game, you got to have some food there. You know what I'm saying? So they had to eat. They were going to eat the calf. But the innocent blood that was shed was the atoning sacrifice. Yes. Meaning this, you couldn't have died for yourself. Come on. Blood had to be shed for it. Hebrews chapter 9 talked about that, that there's no remission of sin without the shedding of innocent blood. And the father said this. He said, I need my son, so don't kill the son, kill the calf. That's the, that's the, that's, thank you, Stacey. See, that's the substitution. What you and I did was really uh, judgment. Our judgment should be death. Romans 6 says that. The wages of sin, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life <laughs> is eternal life in Christ Jesus, right? Yeah. So meaning that we should have died. Yeah, good. Should have died. But he said, no, 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 don't kill my son, kill the calf. Yeah. 
shed his blood so we could be back in fellowship and then he could, he could go on and do what he's called to do. Amen. Well, that's what God is saying to you this morning. Christ was the atoning sacrifice. Blood that was shed for you. So that what? You can get back in fellowship with God the Father and then get on your job. Because, see, we don't talk enough about that. <laughs> oh, my God. We stand at the, at the cross, at the cross. Well, first, uh, like, then I, the God said, okay, I'm going to save you. Get, this, get you straight now. Okay, what you going to go do with this? Because <laughs> you do have an assignment. You, you, you recognize that, right? Yes, yes. He saved you for a reason. Uh-huh. He saved you for a reason. He didn't save you just to, just to be saved. It's something like somebody hire, hiring you at a job and then you stay around the HR department all day. Thank you for hiring me. Thank you for hiring me. They be like, can you go to your desk? Do your job. <laughs> we hired you to do a job. Yes. Did we not? Yes. Oh, thank you for hiring me. Thank you for, oh, thank you. Like, okay, you, you keep doing that. You about to be fired. That's, about, that's what's about. I'm about to go get somebody else who will go to do some work up in here. Yeah, that's what God says. It's, it's a work for you to do. He ain't saved you just for you to be saved. He saved you to use you. That's what he saved you for. Y'all get some out of Y'all look up as y'all look at me like y'all get some. If you get somebody clap, if you get, you get some out of there, you get some out of there. He, he, he saved you to use you, man. It's your insecure self. He saved you. See, because many of you think, I'm oh, pastor, you know, I'm, I'm too light, I'm too dark, I'm too short, I'm too skinny, I'm too fat. All of us got excuses. Yeah. I'm too old, I'm too young, I can't read, I can't do that, I ain't go to college. Excuses. Come on. God wants to use you. All he needs you to be is this one word, available. available. Right. <laughs> All he needs you to be is what? Available. Because if you become available, he'll add the power, he'll add the anointing, he'll add the favor, he'll add the edge, he'll add all that. He just needs you to show up. Amen. Amen? Now, question is, how do I access all this? How do I access the robe of righteousness and access this covenant relationship with God the Father? How do I get this authority that I'm supposed to walk in? And how do I access this forgiveness through the shedding of blood? This one thing called repentance. <laughs> this thing called repentance. I love what, what, what the son said. He came to himself. He said, this version said he came to his senses. And then you, you know what he did? He didn't come making excuses. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. That's right. He took responsibility. See, many of us don't know how to do that. I read a book. Actually, I bought the book. I never read the book, to be honest. I bought a book. <laughs> I, you came to my house, I got a lot of books. Uh, but the book is called The Anatomy of an Apology. Because many of us don't know how to repent correctly. If I would have, you know, if I did something, uh, you know, I'm sorry, you, and then we blame the other folk, you know, you sort of made me mad, and no, that, that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't how you do that. Come on. That's not did, the way. Did, did, did you know if the son ain't do none of that? He says, he said, Father, I have sinned against, first of all, not the Father, he said, for I've sinned against heaven first, then I've sinned against you. He ain't come making excuses. If I said something to my wife, I can't come making it. Well, you know, baby, if you wouldn't have uh, burnt the rice. (laughs) Making excuses. Many of us don't know how to listen. An apology or repentance is you taking responsibility for whatever you did. Clap on that. Whatever you did, take responsibility for it. And stop blaming somebody else. Because we got a blaming generation we in right now. Dexter, don't, don't, don't glide because I feel myself going over there. But back to the story. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven 
and I've sinned against you. Come on. Now, he was off a little bit because he said, make me a servant of the Father. And he listened all like, hey, man, I ain't listening. I ain't making you no servant. But I, I, but I will say, because you took responsibility for your treasonous, crazy ways, now you get access to the, the road. Now you get access to the what? Come on, to the ring. Now you get access to the sandal. Now you get access to the cab because you took responsibility. Now you got to take responsibility, man. You got to recognize. Now, I, 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 I did mine 27 years ago. I recognized Dexter, the way I was living was completely wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. And some of you, the way you were living, you were what? You were wrong. Yes, amen. You recognize it. You were wrong. And then you came to maybe an altar like this, or maybe somebody led you, however they did, but you recognize, listen, I've sinned against heaven, and I've sinned against you. Yeah. And then now what happens is, once you repent, because repent means this, just so you know, repent, repent means to change your mind and change direction. Yeah. So I was going in this direction, but I repent now doing about face, and I go in this direction. Yeah. That's what, that's what true repentance, see, true repentance ain't somebody coming to the altar, oh, crying and looking all ugly. <laughs> no, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that because some people are more emotional than others. I got that. I, I'm just not a very emotional person. Some people are, are not. So it could be, but really, true repentance really manifests itself in change behavior. Yeah. You know, when somebody says, I'm sorry, well, look at them. It, it, it has your behavior change or you just run off at the mile. Come on. I ain't get enough amens amen. on that. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, uh, show me some change behavior. Uh, I think the Apostle John talked about, show me the fruit of repentance. No, no, the, the fruit of repentance is change behavior. Don't talk me to death. Show me some. Show me what you're working with. Show me, show me some change behavior. Come on. But it's about what? Repentance. Love that boy. He said, I ain't, he ain't come making no excuses. Father, I was wrong. I showed my behind. I was disrespectful. Take me back into your house. Father said, come on. Uh, <laughs> Quickly, come on. And that's what he does every single time. Romans chapter 10 and 13, I had no this. He says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord could be saved. No, it says shall be saved. Shall be means it's sure enough going to happen. Anybody, anytime you say, Father, you know what? I shouldn't have said that. Father, I shouldn't have did that. I recognize that I'm going in the wrong direction. Come on. And I'm giving my life over to you. And as I give my life over to you, that's called repentance. And then I'm eligible for the, the what? The robe? Come on now. The ring, sandals, and the cap. Amen. <laughs> Now, there's some other stuff. I didn't, we, we didn't read the whole story because if you go on down, there was some other stuff. He, he had an older brother who was a hater. <laughs> and we didn't even have time for that today. <laughs> but he had an older brother who was a hater. And that's what's going to happen to some of y'all. When you give your life to Christ, you're going to have some haters. Good place to clap. You got some haters. You the folk you were getting high with and running with, now they're going to start hating up on you. Because now your light begins to shine them up. And you got to be able to bear up underneath that. That's why you need to, that's why you got to become part of a church family. That's right. Who can, who can support you and help you grow? It goes from being saved to being discipled. It's, it's a discipleship that needs to take place. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank for the word that's going forth in God, even as we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And how you've given us access to the robe, the ring, 
the sandals and the calves. Lord, I pray his word has fallen on good ground. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you, the atmosphere. I pray we do, three, we do three things every week at FCC. Number one, we open up the altar for salvation. Now, we pray the prayer of salvation really during communion, but uh, if you want to commit, you want to um, confirm that and want to come and pray well, again with one of our prayer warriors, let's do that. So that's number one. Number two, if, if, if you want to recommit your life, let's do that today. Listen, today is a good day to do that. Good place to clap. No, no, today is a good day. Today is a good day to, to get recommitted. Get yourself back where you need to be. All of us get unfocused. All of us get unlost. That was Luke chapter 15. And those of you who are around me know I quote it a lot. Because it's a great way to get recommitted to the things of God. God got a, fire, God, God got a bright future for you. But you got to commit. See, many of us are doing what, what, I, what, I, what I call the spiritual hokey pokey. <laughs> one foot in, one foot out. Shake it all about, you know, or, or double dutch. You know, you jump with the girls. I used to watch a girl. They do double dutch. They like doing this. See, men, it's one foot in, one foot out. Put both feet in, man. <laughs> Will you put, please, put both feet in. Listen, life is precious. You recognize that? I've been around a lot of death lately. A lot of death. <laughs> a lot of death. And I don't like it. Death is prickly. And I'm just trying to get you to get your life together. Well, Pastor, I'll do it later. Who said you're gonna be a, who said it's gonna be a later for you? See, we, we act like we act like we got all this. You don't have that. I'm, I'll be 55. Well, I'm 55, and I'll be 56 in a couple of weeks. Ain't no guarantee I'm gonna make 56. I'm believing I'm gonna make 56. Ain't no guarantee of that. And you believe well, I'm away. No, 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 no. You need to get it done today, baby. You need to get it done today. Nothing I always talk about a lot of time. This thing called repentance, but also forgiveness. There's some people that you need to forgive. Yeah. Well, Pastor, it did something to me. Well, okay, I, I get that. I, I, I recognize people have done you dirty, but you know what? Because you suddenly the sound of my voice, God expects you. To go get it right with people. Yeah. Not be crawling in some casket. Oh, I wish I could have. Dude, it's too late. You can't do nothing now. They gone. So if you need to get that done, let's pray with you. Get you ready to go back to get your heart ready to get to, to forgive folk. As a matter of fact, forgiveness is more for them, more for you than for them. Yeah. Jack your health up. Get you all mad. So number one, if Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, take a step of faith. Prayer words get in position. Number two, if you will need to recommit your life. And then number three, if there's something else you need to pray for. Maybe you got a job interview coming up this week. Uh, you got some sickness in your body. Whatever it is, it's all part of the kingdom. Let's pray with you for that. And uh, God will hear your prayer today. So number one, if Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, take a step of faith and come on up. Number two, if you want to recommit your life. And then number three, if you want to pray for something else, let's do that. Move accordingly.
Holy Presence. Your Holy Presence. Living in me. Living in me. This is my daily bread. One more time. This is my daily bread. Daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I. without you. I'm lost without you. <laughs> That's good. One more time. Lost without you. I'm lost without you. All right, we're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff, boy. It's, <laughs> it's time to give. Giving the part of worship experience, um, many ways to give it to the kingdom of God. Uh, you can see, you can scan the QR code there. We have our website, we have our app, text to give, uh, check cash, check money order. You can call our church office or send us a check. Anybody need an envelope? Anybody need an envelope? Now, if you take an envelope, that means, Angie, that you got to write a big check. <laughs> I'm just playing. Anybody need an envelope? We'll get one to you. My brother over here, he needs one. Keep your hands raised until you get one. Keep your hands raised until you get one. One up here, my one right here. Thank you. Sister Latanya needs one. Right, right here, Sandrine. Everybody good? Yes, thank you. All right. Ooh, you all right, baby girl? All right. Let's do our confession of faith. One, two, three. I'm cheerfully sowing my financial seed into FCC and the kingdom of God. I recognize God as my source and expect the reap a harvest of God's blessing in my life 30, 60, and 100 fold in order to meet my spiritual, physical, relational, and financial needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Be blessed as you give.
I forgot to do a prayer salvation with those out there in Digitalville. So, so if you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. We did it already, but I want to do it again uh, just to be consistent. So and maybe somebody, and maybe you may have tuned in after we did it earlier. So if Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, congregation, can we, can y'all pray with me as we pray with them? Say, Father, Father thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for me. I recognize I need your help and confess you as Lord and Savior this day. Amen. So now you are saved, born again, part of the family of God. Now the prayer led you in, you can find that in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And you look at verse 13 that says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now there should be a QR code and a connection card that you can uh, you can fill out because what we want to do is help you to grow in your faith. It's not just enough to be saved. You want to be used and so we want to help you be all that God has called for you to be. Congregation, give them a round of applause. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together for that word. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus is so good. Amen. If you're here for the first time, can you just stand so we can say hello to you? We're not going to embarrass you in any kind of way. We just want to say hi. Hello, sweetie. Everybody give them a good FCC welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. FCC, just we're a hugging church. I hope you don't mind. Amen. Amen. Welcome. We're so glad to see you all of y'all and everybody on digital in Digitalville that's here for the first time. We thank you for your your being here. For those of you who are here for the first time, who have a smartphone, if you'll just point it to that QR code and fill out a connection card real quick so we can say hello to you. Amen? Amen. Next slide, Sydney Jenkins. All right. Y'all look beautiful today. We want y'all to come back next week. Amen. And bring somebody with you. Come on now. Amen, amen. Bible study is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via YouTube. It's a powerful time. It's a powerful time. So please do be, tune in. Amen. Amen. Here's our calendar. King's daughter's out there. Woo -hoo! Full transparency. I have no idea what we're doing this, this month, but we're going to do something good. Amen. Iron shopping's iron. All the men out there. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have a class after church to let the guys know how to whoop. Okay. All right, April 19th at 7 p.m. And then we have new members class April 21st. Amen. Like, share, and subscribe to our content. You're, we get good word here. We get Bible-believing, Bible-taught word here. So like, share, and subscribe to our content. Amen. Amen. We have some refreshments for y'all out in the, in the lobby. Usually we sort of hang out, but it's Resurrection Sunday. And as we all know, there's a roast in the oven. Amen. All right, let's all stand for closing prayer. Amen, amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you first and foremost, Father, for who you are and the, how much you love us, Father. We thank you, Father, for your son that you sent to die for us as we celebrate his resurrection on today. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that we all know individually, Father, that that was done for us personally. Lord, that this is a personal thing. You want an individual you want an individual relationship with us. So, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that people don't leave here without understanding the love you have for them. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, Father, for all that took place here, both seen and unseen. Lord, I thank you, Father, for this word that fell on good ground. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that it will carry us through this week, Father. And, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, Father, for all, all who you brought here with us today, Father. I seek a blessing for everyone underneath the sound of my voice. And we say amen, amen, and amen. Have an awesome day, people. Don't forget to bring, some, bring somebody back next week and bring, get some snacks as you leave. Amen?